Hi, just a little home repair video I thought I'd uh, show you. Yes, I am still sick as a dog, absolutely terrible, can't do anything. Um, but I am looking at this, and this is one of uh, Sagan's toys. It's one of these um, speed pipe things. It's like a little uh, remote control car that goes through these uh, pipes, these tubes that you can click together in different configurations to make them do loops and, and corners and all sorts of stuff. Kind of reminds me of The Running Man, if you've seen The Running Man, if you haven't. You must watch the Running Man. Classic Arnie. Check out this case. I thought this was rather interesting. This look, it's got a uh, it's got a PCB pattern on the back of that. I don't think that's a legit pattern, of course. It's one of those uh fakey fake ones. But uh anyway, yeah, it's just got uh, controls like forward and reverse controls, and that's basically it. And it's an infrared uh thing because the it's not RF, and none of that RF rubbish, because the tubes are uh, clear, so they can see through. So the little self-contained battery-powered car inside the uh, tubes obviously receives the IR signal telling it where to go. Um, so, sorry, I've only got my Sony RX100 uh, camera here, so I don't have a good macro lens. But anyway, um, Sagan was complaining that he thought that Huxley had buggered this. It's obviously like a channel. A switch because you can have like two of these in the same tube like trying to race and catch each other and he said that uh, Huxley had somehow busted it and he couldn't move the switch anymore from A to B and that's why it wasn't working and one of the uh, for, and sure enough I like tried that and it and it could I couldn't budge that switch and you know I got the knife in there and and it just it didn't make sense at all and then I took the first one of the first things to do was look at the visual cues on here, and you might be able to see that that plastic is a bit deformed and melted. Aha! So the next thing you do is give it a bit of a oh, sniff, and yep, it's got that classic burnt electronics uh, smell. So something is shorted out. So I opened it up, and sure enough, sorry, I've got to try and hold the camera with one hand, and you might be able to see that those wires have shorted together not only were the two wires shorted together coming from the battery terminals but then the black wire was also shorted to the back side of the switch down in there sorry it's hard to show you that it was also shorted right down in there you might be able to see I can't get any closer without a good macro lens so the batteries were completely shorted. So what sparked that, no pun intended, not that you would have gotten a spark, really. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, what, like, obviously the current directly from the batteries, it was shorting them out, and that and that melted all the wires and it melted to the side of the switch, and you can probably see the switch down in there is all, is all melted, that AB switch. So yeah, it heated all this up to buggery. Uh, did it short out inside? A switch because usually the wires are you know pretty good insulation on them um so really like of course one of them could have had a nick but then well the other one would have had to have a nick in the same spot so that switch is uh, heated up obviously the uh the metal body of the switch and that's melted all the plastic all all around there on the on the actual uh lever of the switch the sliding lever there and then it just melted the wires together as well and i had to had to pry those apart, had to get the knife right in there and, and really chop those, really chop those out. I had a really hard time separating them actually, so. So you should be able to see that exposed negative wire there and how all the insulation has just completely melted off that and then melted into the side of the switch housing. So ordinarily, the, those switch housings aren't actually electrically connected to one of the uh, terminals, one of the switch contacts, so they're just floating. Um, unless you, uh, on the PCB layer, you put the pins in there. So let's get, wow, check out that switch. The, the lever contact on there is completely melted off and embedded itself in the actual, um, in the, the uh, switch, you know, the top uh, uh, cap. That is unbelievable. This could have got massively hot. Of course, there's a lot of energy in two, uh, double A batteries so yeah um, you, you short them out and uh, that can that can really heat up and ruin your day so what's going on here let's have I don't know let's have a look at the yeah oh, yeah it all just fell off wow look at that so let's have a look at the bottom here aha yes the 
There you go, the outer, it is electrically connected, so that's what's happened. You can see that the the two contacts on the two outer pins there are the electrical contacts for the case of the switch, and obviously the ground terminal, oh, it's, yeah, so it's actually grounded. No, so it's negative, so if the ground terminal, yeah, you have to strip the wire to solder it in. So if that made contact with the outer metal case, that shouldn't, that really shouldn't have mattered. What's the chip on there? Can't see it. Sorry, maybe those playing along at home can pull a part number off that from a HD screen. So they've electrically connected the case of that switch. So, what, so it could have, it could have been an internal contact short in the switch would be my guess because the white wire is sold you know is, is is significantly away from that so obviously once they it may be shorted out inside the switch and then uh, yeah I, I would say that's the deal oh is the because really they aren't power contacts that's not the power switch that's the AB signal switch so it's all logic level stuff so even if it's shorted out inside there um, you know, the path would have to be through the chip to short out the battery. So that doesn't make sense. And, oh, power. No, okay. No, no, no. There it is. Sorry, I can see it. Yeah, it comes from the power switch over here. Yes, okay. So the power switch, yep. Yep, so that second pin over there is power. Yep. So obviously that's where it's shorted out. That comes from the power switch over here. Aha, there you go. So, it's in all likelihood, um, the chip's okay, and it's just shorted out the battery. So, if I clean that up and just, uh, uh, I don't know, put a new switch in, or no, I'll just permanently wire it, because we've only got one of the things, so I'll just uh, permanently wire it to channel B, and uh, so I just desolder the switch, I guess, and uh, cleaned all up, and that, hopefully, will work again. Hmm... Yeah, I'm not sure if you can see that, but I can certainly see that inside that switch, those contacts are toast. So yeah, the, uh, the shorts actually definitely happen inside the switch, and it has to be. That's the obvious conclusion, based on the fact that the power comes in here. There we go, there's the positive, goes down to the switch, comes out of the switch, goes up that trace there, sorry for my crude finger pointing, goes to the second contact. So that second contact has shorted out to the external case which they decided to ground instead of float and there's no electrical reason to do that so you could maybe blame the uh, I don't know, do you blame the PCB layout person or do you blame the original designer who specified that I wonder if that's specified on the schematic whether or not they showed that uh, those pins were electrically connected to ground or not there was no, you know, there's no like EMC reason to uh, do it or anything like that so yeah, hmm, you're reliant upon the reliability of that switch to prevent shorts. Anyway, I think that's a rather interesting fault, and it uh, can show you how you can really come a gutter by relying on one of these uh, cheaper switches they obviously got from uh, whoever was cheapest at the Shenzhen market that day when they were making this, and uh, it, it must have shorted out. Inside, you know, all it takes is a little, you know, a little solder ball or some other little uh, flake of anything, or maybe it's just a badly designed switch. And they've completely come a gutter, and that's shorted out the batteries. Unbelievable. Probably the last fault I would have uh, expected in such a product. So if you've seen a similar sort of uh, power, well, in this case, it's a signal uh, switch. It either, there's a pin on the micro here that obviously either connects directly to ground on this side or to power on this side, and it doesn't do it through a, through a resistor, through a protection resistor. So it, uh, obviously, if you get a short with inside the switch, it's going to ruin your day. Anyway, let us know if you've seen something similar in a product. I hope you liked it. Catch you next time.